Could you talk a bit more about your relationship with your contemporaries in New York and the uh, graphic, uh, 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 the printmakers' workshop? Maybe people like Louis Kamnitzer, whether uh, it, your work relates, or do you know him? And uh, what that sort of Louis Kamnitzer, you know who I'm talking about? Louis Kamnitzer, the, he's a Brazil, oh, yes. Uruguayan, yes. but also the use of text and things and how that played out in your work. I, uh, you know, I'm the generation of. generation feminists and I worked worked with them and I do feel uh, very close to the community because you know art is part of the community because uh, um, I mean I haven't lived in Delhi since uh, uh, 1974. And there's a whole generation, I don't know what they're doing. And uh, I, in New York, the few artists I know, you know, we look at each other's work, we talk about each other's work. And not necessarily because this emergence of diaspora is very new. Uh, you know, I went to California on a teaching job and I came back and it had changed. Uh, because suddenly that was the concern. And uh, I have, uh, I do relate to the work because, you know, work is part of the culture. And, but also here, uh, I have never been really included in my generation, you know, when you write about women artists and you have a whole list, list of uh, women artists, and then uh, my name wouldn't even be mentioned. And then I was saying, why I'm holding on to this identity when they don't even acknowledge me that I exist? And I exist, I think, the people who really I'm back for uh, the young second generation, people who are children of my friends, like like Kali and uh, Manisha, and I mean, uh, I'm friends with their with their with their parents and uh, Pablo and Ram, and the p people even younger than them in their thirties, and that I think it's I, I always uh, have have a responsibility and I enjoy their work because, uh, you know, they're, they're at ease with, uh, with the media, they're, they're true to their, you know, generation, they're not trying to be, they're not putting in uh, Indian imagery uh, forcefully, they, they are who they are. But uh, I do feel close, you know, and uh, that is, you know, but generally, I have never, uh, I am in a way disappointed because I have tried to keep this connection. And now I, it really doesn't matter at this age, you know, because uh, I am who I am. You feel formally that you were located somewhere when you, all your experiences living here, apart from the kind of ideas that you're dealing with in terms of form. But, but you see, what were the relationships you, you had? You learn to look at things when you are, you're a child. I left India when I was 21 years old, but my eyes were, my eye was already trained. And sometimes I feel I work in Urdu because words come to me first and the form follows because people, you know, have made a work of art or what they call art. Uh, and then they title it. For me, title comes first. And that you know the diet, the words I have used are culturally very important to me, because you know when you call chokhat, which is threshold, and it has a similar kind of meaning in Urdu and in English, because you have come up to the threshold or the door, and you know that at least you have found the door, 
uh, you know, there's a story from Ma Maulana Rumi that there was a man who was knocking at the door and he said, here I am and I'm knocking at the door forever and nobody has come. And the man said, aren't you lucky you have found the door? So that's what the door carries for me. And then, you know, the courtyard, because of, you know, coming from a parda home, our life revolved in the house, you know, under the sheltering sky. And, we, you know, you, you looked at the cosmos, and of course you looked at the lunar calendar, and... Uh, but uh, language is very, very important to me. And, uh, again, it's placing it in a historical sense. Anybody else? Yeah, she did a book of Urdu phrases. Proverbs. Proverbs. So, now, this is very beautiful. This is Halwai ki dukaan pe nana ji ka fatya. And I have used this image in sculpture also. Halwai ki dukaan pe nana ji ka fatya. You know, I'm... Fatya is the last right, but you're doing it in a shop of Halwai with the dues. And you know, this, this image, you see it, you know, you, you pass some, some apples are arranged like this. Yes. Laddus are arranged Lad, like this. Lad, yes. <laughs> the next one, okay. This, this, this was Saje ki handia chop me tute. <laughs> so, people should never share a kitchen. This was... Uh, Savan ke andhe ko hara hi hara dekta hai. Because the person who goes blind in the springtime sees green in everything. Sees green, he always best, sees green. Because he, only, he can only, only see green. So I got it reprinted. This, this capacity to translate a fleeting thought into a epi, uh, an, ep, uh, a, 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 an iconic image, that, that, that's a fantastic capacity that uh, I see in Zarina that, you know, Capturing something in 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 a very very condensed. Um. But again, the you know the proverb came first, so I had to find an image, and sometimes I get stuck. You know how do I do it? That in the home is a foreign place. I had said afternoon, but if you have grown That's up. That's a beautiful. Can huh, you oh, want to talk the, about this? Yeah, this is the print I did. I had started it. And it's called City of Light and Darkness because the light and darkness are so close to each other. And this is a map of uh, uh, Paris. And I did a collage. I cut an old print, uh, silk screen, which I was not too happy, and then I collaged it. So this will be in the Paris show in March. But uh, it was hard to do. Took forever. And this is the print, you know, the travels with Rani. It was a leftover print, and I cut it and wove it because I think it's. Uh, uh, I think memory. Talking about memory is the biggest lie. We tell what we want to tell, and the rest are hidden behind. So that's the part which interests me. And these are letters from home. This is uh, uh, my sister's letter. Uh, when she sold the house and she's talking about the uh, different uh, plants which is growing and in a way she's having a conversation with the, with the house and the house says don't leave I still have the handprints of your children on my walls. <laughs> she writes very beautifully and I like to collaborate with her sometimes. 
Yes, sir. And the series of tasbihs you made. Yes, because you know I generally don't do things which I don't know them or I don't practice. I am into you know doing the tasbih, and uh, I'm not very good with prayers, but I like the repetition of the word. And I did a series of so far five different prayer beats, and you have one here uh, uh, upstairs. Or, or it's right here, yes, I don't see it, yes. And uh, these are 500 beats. Repeating the word or zikr, as they say in exactly, Sufism. Exactly, yes. And that's very important. And that brings us to, um, to, your, to your association with, with an idealized Sufism. <laughs> which perhaps may not no longer exist in practice, but oh, in your heart yes, yes. it, it, it does. But I think it, it, it's, it's exist, you know, if it's, if, if uh, you know, I, I don't want my life to be threatened, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think every, every tradition has its own truth and one has to look at it. But I enjoyed making, I don't know if I'll make any more. Uh, the space, but uh, uh, well, gold is divine in a way. It's a divine presence, and uh, I hesitated. I thought it would be very garish, and then I had to do it. And I uh, sort of used it with the uh, blinding light, and I used. I use uh, 22 carat, and I use the gold for their bulbs, and, uh, and the other day Renu was saying, you know, this bulb is not lighted, and I said, you know, it's what I was teasing her, because <laughs> the light was not shining it, and that is called Noor, Noor is uh, divine light. Uh, at the end, if I may quote from one of Zarina's favorite Urdu poets, Mirza Ghalib again, uh, and uh, this could also be applied to her art practice, uh, Ghalib says, Na tha kuch to khuda tha, na hota kuch to khuda hota. Duboya mujko hone ne, na hota mein to kya hota? When there was nothing, there was God. Had there been nothing, there would have been God. It is this being that has been my undoing, what would have been had I not been. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Zarina Ji. Thank you, Kali. Please join join us for cocktails. <laughs>